Hello everyone. Welcome to the demo for transactional APIs. In this demo, we will look at certain transactional API capabilities. This slide shows some of the APIs that we will look at. The new Anaplan transactional APIs are distributed across two main categories, data APIs to work with module view and list data, as well as model metadata APIs. The model metadata APIs help to fetch properties and metrics for various model objects such as workspaces, models, modules and views, lists, model calendar, model version, and more. Let us now look at a brief summary of the APIs available till now. These slides show all the transaction APIs that are available to our customers and partners as of May 2021. We have APIs to read cell data without using export actions, as well as certain associated model metadata APIs. Let us look at some of them. We have APIs to fetch the list of workspaces that are available to a user. This API not only returns a list of workspaces, but also returns workspace metrics, such as space allocated and space consumed. The next API is an API to return the list of all models accessible to a user. This also includes extra information, such as space consumed by the model in bytes. We have APIs to read the list of modules, list of views in a module, or views across all modules in a model. As mentioned, we also have a cell data read API, which our users can use without requiring to manually set up export action. With the help of this API, users can directly point to a module and view and read the cell data. Similarly, we have APIs to update cell data, once again, without requiring to set up an import action. With the help of the cell data writeback API, users can conveniently update cells in a module. We have similar data and metadata APIs available for module lists. This slide shows some of those APIs. With the help of the first API, users can fetch the list of all lists in a model. With the help of the second API, users can retrieve detailed metrics and properties about a model list. For example, users can query information such as whether the list is a numbered list or a regular list. If it's a numbered list, what is the current index count? If it is a regular list, then what is the current count of items in the list? The API also returns information such as does the list have subsets? If yes, how many and what are the names? Does the list have a parent hierarchy? And so on and so forth. We also have data transaction APIs to work on the list items. It is now possible to read, write, update, and delete list items without using export, import, or delete actions. With the help of these APIs, new items can be added or updated or deleted. Last, we also have transactional metadata APIs to work on the model calendar and versions. It is now possible to perform operations such as reading details of all the versions in a model, updating certain version properties, such as version switch o period, reading certain properties of model calendar, such as current period and current fiscal year, as well as updating current period and the current fiscal year properties with the help of the APIs. Let us now look at demo of some of the transactional data and metadata APIs. The first API we will run is the API to get list of all workspaces that are accessible to the user. When I run this API, I see that I have access to one workspace. I get the internal ID of the workspace, the name of the workspace, the allocated size in bytes for the workspace, as well as the currently occupied sizes of all the models in that workspace. The next API call is an API to get list of all models accessible to the user. Let us run this API. When this API is run, we see that many models are returned. These are the models that the user has access to in all the workspaces. The information returned for each model includes the ID of the model, name of the model, the size of the model in bytes, and which workspace it belongs to, as well as certain other information. Let us go further and look at some of the other metadata APIs. The next API is an API to get list of all modules in the given model. As we can see, we pass the internal ID of the model as a parameter. This ID can be obtained with a previous API call. The value for the ID key is what will be used in the next API call. Once that ID is used in the API, we see the information written as we see here. The output from this API includes the list of all modules in the given model. We see that there are a lot of modules. The information written includes the name of the module and the ID of the module. Continuing further with the module metadata APIs, the next API is an API to get the list of all views in the given module. Once again, we use the output from the previous APIs to enter the ID of the model and the ID of the module in this API call. When this call is run, we see that the given module has one view and that is returned. We get the internal ID of the view, 
we get the name of the view. In our case, the module has just one view and that is a default view. Hence, we see the word default here. If the module had more than one views, we would see those views appear here with their respective names. Let us look at the module in the Anaptan UI. This is the module that we just queried with the help of the APIs. We see that the module has one view, the default view. We can also query the list of all views across all modules in the given model with the help of this API call. When this API is called with the ID of the model, all the modules are returned and all the views are returned. We can see that the module and the view that we are interested in is given here. Once again, we get the internal ID of the view, the name of the view, and the ID of the module that it belongs to. In this case, we see a difference. The name of the view is not default, but name of the module itself. This is the difference between this API call and the previous API call. Let us go ahead. With the help of the transaction metadata APIs, we can also query in-depth information about the view, such as its layout. When we run this API call with the ID of the model and the ID of a given view, the API returns to us the layout of the view. We see that we get the name of the view, the ID of the view, the name and ID of the dimension or the list, which is in the columns. Similarly, the list of dimensions, which are in the rows as well as the page access. Let us look at the module in the Anaplan UI. We see the pivot view. We see L2 migration strategy ID in the pages, line items in the columns and data transfer strategy ID in the rows. This is also what we see in the output from the API. With the help of this API, it is not possible to programmatically report on the layout and structure of a view for analytics purposes. There is no need for the user to log into the module and visually check these details. This can now be automatically fetched from the Anaplan model. Let us now move over to the data APIs. The next API is the transactional data API to read cells from module without using export action. The transactional cell data read API supports returning data in both JSON and CSV format. The API is given here. The API accepts the ID of the model and the ID of the view, as well as the accept header with the value text CSV. Let us read data from the view that we just saw in the Anaplan UI. We see that the data has been returned back to us in the CSV format. This data is an accurate representation of the cells that are shown in this view. We can also run this API with the format parameter. When the same API is run with the format parameter and accept header as application JSON, the view data is returned in JSON format. This is the same information as output with the CSV format, but now it is in JSON format. The cell data read API supports further parameterization based on the dimension or list in the page access. Let us now go to the Anaplan UI and look at the module and view again. Suppose we were interested in retrieving data from this view, but for a different selection of the page dimension. For example, instead of wave to re host app one, let's say we were interested in fetching the cells from the view for wave one re platform app two. With the help of the transactional data read API, it is possible to read different combination of data from the same view thus avoiding the need to create many views for reading different selections of data. The way we achieve that is with the pages parameter. At the end of the cell data read API, we add the pages parameter. The first number here is the ID of the dimension, which is in the page access. The second number here is the ID of the dimension item that we are interested in. These two values can be obtained with other metadata API calls. The first one, that is the ID of the dimension in the page access is obtained with the get view definition API call. This is the API we saw earlier. When we make this API call, we get the list of the dimensions or lists in the page access and we take the ID from here. The second number, that is the ID of the dimension item would correspond to the internal ID of the item that we're interested in. In our case, it would be the internal ID of wave one RE platform app two. And the way to get that would be with the lookup dimension ID API. This is an API where we can pass the name or code of a list or a dimension item and get back the internal ID. Let us look at this API and then switch back to the cell data read API. This lookup API accepts the ID of the workspace, ID of the model, and ID of the dimension or the list. In the body of the API, we provide codes or names for the item that we are interested in. Let us look at the dimension or the list which is in the page access. This is the L2 migration strategy ID. 
if you go to that list l2 migration strategy id we see these list items we see that these items have certain codes let us look at the item that we are interested in we want to read cell data from the same view corresponding to a different page dimension item way one re platform app 2 hence let us take the code for way one re platform app 2 and use that in the lookup api this is the code we also have name for another list item that is the one highlighted here let us run the api call you see that the api has returned to us the internal id of the list item corresponding to code chr wave 12 this id we plug in the cell data read api as the second number let us now run this api we see that now the api has returned to us data from the view corresponding to the selection way one re platform app 2 we were able to fetch this data without requiring to create a separate view in the module similarly if there's a requirement to read cell data from multiple selections of the page dimension this can now be achieved with a single saved view you might notice in the previous lookup api that we had also provided name for another list item but that was not returned that is because this dimension is a numbered list number lists have codes and the name that we see here is actually coming from the display property hence when we gave the name anaplan ignored it if this was a regular list then we would also have received the id of the item by providing the name let us now switch over to the calendar api with the help of the get current period api we can get the value of the current period for the model calendar we pass the workspace id and the model id and when we run this api call we see the following output we see the current period returned to us which includes the text as displayed on an upland ui and the last date of the current period in our case the current period is march 2020 and the last day of march 2020 is 31st march we also get information on the calendar type we see that the value matches what we see in an upland ui the current period is march 20 calendar type is calendar months quarters or years similarly we can also use the put api call to update the current period to a different value we can get the current fiscal year when we run the api call we see the current fiscal year being returned let us go back to some of the data apis let us now look at some of the model list related apis the first api is an api to get the list of lists in the model we send the workspace id the model id and then with the help of this api we get the list of all the lists in that model the api returns the internal id and the name of the list we can verify this against the list in the anaplan ui you see a collection of lists and all of these are returned here we can pick a particular list let us pick one of the lists and fetch detailed metrics and properties about that list we will go back to the list we were referring to earlier the l2 migration strategy id we will run the list metadata api call on this list the api signature looks like this we send the workspace id model id and the id of the list we see that the api has returned to us detailed properties and metrics for the list we know the id of the list the name of the list next the api also returns any custom properties in the list we see that there is one property in the list called display of type text and it has a formula the api returns the formula in case the property has a formula we see that the list does not have selective access enabled so it is false we see that the list has another parent list called alone migration facility that information is returned along with the id of the parent list more information we now know that the list is a numbered list it has 12 items and its index count is 639 and the next item index count will be 640. The API also returns more useful information such as which modules is this list used in. Switching to the list data API, we can point to this list and read the items from this list. With the help of the API that I ran just now, we get all items in the list in JSON format. We get the ID of each list item 
the name and code and parent properties of each list item as well as information about values in any custom properties and any parent for that list item. Thank you for seeing this brief demo of Anaplan Transactional APIs. We have many more APIs which are available to our customers and partners to build integrations as well as more APIs coming up in future. Please refer to the online transactional API documentation at apri.io. You will find the list of all the transactional APIs that are available with detailed description. Thank you.